Greetings, fellow masters. It is I, the Bell Tolls. Once again, it's time for another farming guide, and today we'll be focusing on one of the most demanding bronze mats, Dragon Fangs. Saber faces in particular love to eat these, as you can see on the chart to the right, and they need quite a lot of them. Come on, Rider Altar. 177? Really? Anyway, since we need literally thousands of these, we may as well jump into how to go about getting our hands on them. Let's start with the events this year. Timestamp below for those who want to skip this part. Oh boy, the events. If you need Dragon Fangs, you're in luck, because it seems nearly every event this year is going to throw them at you in some form or another. Valentine's 2019 has 30 in the shop, and the Novice Cavalry node can drop them, along with Heroes Proofs. Hunting Quest 3 has a node with Dragon Fangs and Hearts, so this is one you'll definitely want to be using Apples on if you have them. The Rashomon rerun has 5 from Mission Rewards on Day 6, and 20 in the Event Shop. Likewise, the Onigashima rerun has 30 in the Shop, and the Rough Pass node drops them. The Summer rerun drops them in the Viewpoint node, at all difficulties. Dead Heat Summer Race constantly confuses me, but it seems that Round 4 with teams Fran, Nobu, and Nidocris have nodes that drop Fangs, specifically the A Valley node. I'll figure this event out soon, I swear. On the flip side, Death Jail Summer Escape has another 30 fangs in the shop, while Team Helena's 3rd Underground Area node drops them. During the qualifiers of Nerofest 2019, the 20 AP node can drop fangs, the Huge Pumpkin Village rerun has 30 in the shop, and that's it. No node for this one, friends. Great Battle at Himeji Castle has several nodes that drop it. These are Castle Gates, Food Storage, Treasure Room, Burial Chamber, and Grand Curved Gables. Finally, Merry Christmas in the Netherworld's second 40 AP node, Shapeless Christmas, can drop them. And that sums up your events for this year. Excluding main quests and challenge quests which might drop them, you have 145 guaranteed Dragon Fangs, along with 13 different nodes. So, you've got some options. But those events are later, I hear you saying. Yes, right you are. So let's move on to where we can start farming these precious teeth right now. For this, we need only to look at Deming and America, which happens to be the best spot on the JP server too. With a 62% drop rate, you'll get one just about every two runs. Not too shabby. This is another single class node, so we can narrow down our servant options pretty easily. Time to look at the waves we need to deal with. The first wave is a group of pushovers. Two wyverns with just shy of 13k health. This might be a time I recommend face carding, but we won't if we can help it. Wave 2 is again pretty easy. Our first Wyvern has 24.8k health, and the second has 20.3k. Nothing too difficult. Wave 3 is where you might run into a problem. There are two Wyverns with 49.9k health, led by a third Wyvern with a beefier 109.6k health bar. Fortunately, we'll have an ace up our sleeve to deal with them. At least, I hope most of you do. It'll be pretty difficult if you don't. Now then, time for the team comps. Let's start with our free-to-play slash cheap-to-play comp, as we usually do. Before anything, our Mystic Code is Hogwarts, and you'll want to support Waver. I'll cover this comp a bit differently, as it has different strategies depending on when you can get certain NPs. Let me briefly go over the Servants. First, we have a Rash, with whatever CE you can give him that starts him off with the highest NP gauge. An MLB K-Scope is the best, but that's not very FTP, so your best bet is probably going to be an MLB Dragon's Meridian, or a 50% Charge Event CE. If you're lucky, you could use a regular K-Scope, or Imaginary Around. Next is Phantom of the Opera, the only bronze assassin with an AoE NP. That makes him a perfect pick for this All Rider node. Again, you want whatever CE gives him the most NP. Finally, we have Assassin Skullhawk, who will be using the heavily damaged Wave 3. You'll want a CE that gives her NP and a damage buff of some sort, so things like Halloween Princess, Golden Sumo, or Holy Night Dinner are great choices. Now, let's get into the strategy. There are two main options that depend on how fast you can get Arash's NP. If you know you aren't going to be able to fire it off on Wave 1, just save Stella for Wave 2 and spend this wave using Arts cards and building up NP for Rash and Phantom. You want a Rash to get to at least 80% so his battery can close the gap, but depending on the skill level, you can go as low as 70%. If you can use a Rash's NP immediately, you'll still want to use an Arts and Quick card from Phantom before it so he can get some NP charge. This should have him at about 60% going into Wave 2. So to recap, Wave 1 can either be face carded for NP charge, or you can use Stella to clear it instantly. Let's move to the next wave. At this point, regardless of which strategy you used, Phantom should have at least 60% charge. If a Rash is still available, just use Stella to clear Wave 2. If he isn't available, use the NP gain from Waver's second and third skills, along with the Hogwarts battery to get Phantom to 100%. Then use his NP here. 
Wave 2 should be a quick clear. Now we're on to Wave 3. Use Waver's first skill on Assassin's Skullhawk. Depending on your strategy, you'll either have both Phantom and Skullhawk's MPs available, or just Skullhawk's. In both cases, you want to use Skullhawk's third skill to give her the quick buff. If you have both available, use Phantom's first, then Skullhawk's. If you only have one, try to get her Brave Chain with Skullhawk so she can one-shot the side Wyverns, and then the rest of her chain can take down the big guy in the middle. After all that, this node should be toast. Depending on your strategy, you can get this anywhere from 4 to 6 turns. Let's move on to the mid-core comp. It's, uh, pretty much the same as the F2P one. The major changes are we're using Royal Brand as our Mystic Code, and we've got Phantom equipped with a K-Scope so he doesn't need to use any face cards. Arash could have a K-Scope too, but MLB Imaginary Round works pretty well. Wave 1 is just as simple as use Stella, not much more to it. For Wave 2, just use Waver buffs to get Phantom to 100%, then fire off his NP. If it doesn't fully clear the wave, face cards should clean it up just fine. Wave 3 is pretty much the same deal, except you want to use Royal Brand's quick buff on Assassin Skullhawk. Just use Waver's first skill to get it to 100%, then use Gay Bulk Alternative. Again, it probably won't one-shot the wave, but the last Waver will be more than easy enough to face card. This should be a pretty simple 3 turn comp, unless you only get Phantom face cards on Wave 3. Then it's probably 4 turns. Now this is normally where I'd put the Whale comp, but there's no real major changes to strategy here. You can use the exact same servants as the previous two comps and still get a 3 turn result. If you have MLB scopes, you could probably swap out a rash for some with an NP buff like Drake or Teach, but really at this point you're just minimizing the amount of time it takes to click buttons or load in a new servant. I could totally go over stuff like that, optimizing button presses and load times, but I think most people are here for cheap comps for fast clears, regardless of how many buffs they have to use. So no well comp this time. With that, we're at the end of this farming video. With the power of AoE assassins, you can now farm dragon fangs to your heart's content. You'll need them. As always, thank you very much for watching. Feel free to like the video, comment some material suggestions below, or even subscribe if you like what I do here. Farewell for now, fellow masters. May your farming be bountiful, and may the bell never toll for you. Until next time.